Nom Nom delivers fresh food with whole ingredients, backed by veterinarian science. Science tells us that a dog's health starts in the bowl, so improving their diet is one of the best ways to help them live a long and happy life. Nom Nom's food is full of proteins your dog loves and the vitamins and nutrients they need to thrive. All you have to do is order, pour, and serve. Ready to make the switch to fresh? Order Nom Nom today. Go to https colon slash slash trinom.com forward slash curveball and get 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's https colon slash slash T-R-Y-N-O-M dot com forward slash curveball. Plus, Nom Nom comes with a money back guarantee. If your dog's tail isn't wagging within 30 days, Nom Nom will refund your first order. No fillers, no nonsense, just Nom Nom. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Hello and welcome to another episode of Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, the show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by author and personal trainer, Sean Tagmire. Sean has went through a lot of ups and downs in her life, a lot of health problems, but she has bounced back to run several marathons and ultra marathons in the past 15 years. She has written books and she is here today to show you that it is never too late to take charge of your life one step at a time. Sean, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh my gosh, Kerbal, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm super excited. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Um, well, as you as you had said in the introduction, um, I've written a book. It was my memoir, and I am a personal trainer. It didn't quite start out that way. Uh, when I was 36, I suddenly came upon the realization that um, I smelled like a dirty ashtray, and I had been smoking for half of my life. So I started smoking, I mean, really smoking when I was 18. And I was absolutely disgusted by the smell. It took me a while to um, quit, which I did through hypnosis of all things. And, um, you know, I kind of thought, okay, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm not a smoker anymore. So that's all good. Well, within like three years, I managed to gain like 40 some pounds, of course, never realizing it. And, um, I ended up going to Weight Watchers to lose some weight. And I thought, okay, this is good. This is good. So I was losing weight and I hadn't been smoking. I had quit smoking. And, you know, I I was, um, I have two boys. I was a soccer mom. You know, I, I had a nice little job, you know, sitting in an office and wife, mother, soccer mom, you know, employee trying to do the best she can. But I didn't really know really who Sean was at that point. Um, I had never done any serious, well, really serious or non serious form of exercise in my life. And um, uh, dad on one of our on my older son's soccer team had started this crazy thing called running. And um, my son was on a travel soccer team. And if anybody's ever been on a travel team of any sort, you know, you kind of spend every weekend for a year or two or three with the same families traveling around. So everybody becomes, you know, good friends. And Walt had started this running thing. And when you're a new runner, you really like to talk about it. And um, unless you're a runner, um, you really don't care. And I was really, really too polite to say, I I don't really care about your running, Walt. So he would just kind of be talking to me all the time. 
And um, I would just smile and nod and go, oh, that's great. That's great. Well, I think it kind of planted seeds in my brain because I, I never ran, you know. I mean, I think I tried cross country in seventh grade and that was an epic fail. And that was my whole career of any kind of sports. But um, I somehow thought maybe I could try running. So under under the cover of darkness, I did try a little bit of running and found that I actually liked it. And as time went on, I kind of thought, well, maybe I should find out a little bit more about all this exercising, how to eat, how to drink, how to stretch. So I started taking classes at our local community college. And um, unbeknownst to me, I was taking classes that was like a group of classes that enabled you to get a certificate in fitness. And with taking all those classes, it also um, readied you for a national certification test, which I really had no intention of taking because why would I want to be a personal trainer when I was like 40 something, you know? Well, anyway, long story short, I found that I really enjoyed all the classes and um, I did end up becoming a personal trainer through all those classes. Um, I started um, coaching runners, developing um, programs for people to run a 5K, their first 5K, their first half marathon um, through our local running store here and Waltz, along with a lot of other seasoned runners, I'll call them, because they'd been running much longer than I had. You know, people were just... Um, kind of surprised. They said, Oh my gosh, so you never really did any running before or any kind of encouragement or coaching. I'm like, no, no. And, and you used to smoke. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like it was my job, you know? So they would say, gosh, you really, you should really write a book. Um, and I think that's Walt was the one that kept saying that he's like, no, you don't, you just don't understand this. This is kind of really neat, you know, that you've gone through all these changes. And um, so I used to joke around with them and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to write a book one of these days and it's going to be called running with Walt because you're the one that inspired me and encouraged me to do this. And so then I did, I, I finally wrote the book running with Walt, my memoir. Um, and um, I eventually I got so busy with my personal training that I had to quit my office job at the time. And so I just became a full time personal trainer, um, a running coach. And in 2016, I had my manuscript ready to go. Um, and I was supposed to go to downtown um, I was supposed to go to Chicago. I live about 40, 50 miles northwest of Chicago for the Chicago Writer Association to kind of pitch your manuscript to different agents. Um, And I had three or four agents picked out and I was like super excited about it. Um, And I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, um, which is bone marrow cancer. And that kind of wiped everything off because I was supposed to go in March and I was diagnosed in February and then I had to do chemo and stem cell transplant and all that good stuff. So I really forgot about my manuscript really, because I spent most of um, 16 trying to get my, um, you know, get chemo done and all that stuff. And then in 2017, I was trying to get my new normal going and um, because I don't, you know, everybody has different um, chemo stories. I mean, chemo affects everybody so differently. Cancer affects everybody so differently. And I was just trying to um, get back on my feet and everything. And then I was feeling pretty good um, towards the end of the year. And I thought, oh, I should probably really kind of start looking at that manuscript again. Well, then in 2018, I came out of remission and I had to kind of start all over again with a whole new um, plan. Um, so that was 2018. And towards the end of 18, when 19 was rolling around, I thought, I, I really need to get my book out there because 2020 is coming around in the way these years are going, you know. So I did. Um, I spent most of 2019, I was working with a consultant 
consultant named, um, her name is Martha Bullen. She's absolutely incredible. And she, she just kind of guided me and, you know, pointed me toward different editors on who to choose for editors. And, you know, I spent, um, basically the whole, most of the year rewriting and working with, um, a lady Dina, we did the book the book jacket design. And, you know, there's just so many things to work on. But that was 2019. And um, we published it in August of 2019 on Amazon. And it was um, like their bestseller new releases for the whole month. So that was good. So and here I am today now just chatting with you. (laughs) Well, you talked about how chemo and cancer is different for everybody. Tell us Mm -hmm. about your story of chemo and cancer and all that you went through. Um, With mine, I I have um, what is called multiple myeloma um, and it's bone marrow cancer. And it was, it was very, it was very surprising that I had it. Um, I, I really didn't have any indication. Um, The only thing that I couldn't quite figure out was, um, my breathing wasn't good. Now, um, I'd run several, several ultra marathons and marathons, you know, I was just running all the time. Now I'm not a fast runner. So, you know, but I I enjoyed taking some um, cardio type classes. Um, I was just, you know, always doing something. And all of a sudden, I suddenly couldn't breathe anymore, like my body would go, but I couldn't breathe. And um, I'd go to my doctor and they're like, yeah, let's try a little puffer thing. And, you know, they gave me one of those asthma puffer things or whatever. And they said, oh, it's probably allergies or sinuses because I was getting bloody noses as well. And it was it was really upsetting to me, um, like 2015, because the, I spent most of the year not being able to run to keep up with my friends and stuff. I felt like I was constantly having to walk. And like I said, I was going to the doctor and everything. So by the time 2016 rolled around in January, I decided to give blood um, because because I wasn't running anything long distance. So I went to give blood and I failed the little test where they drop your blood in. And um, they said, oh, no, you, you don't have you're anemic. I'm like, oh, all right. Well, they did it again and then again. And um, I knew there was kind of a problem when they came over and took a big binder out and they said, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're really low. Um, You, you, you're going to have to go see your doctor. And I thought, go see my doctor. Can I just take an iron pill or something? But I went and saw my doctor and she looked at it and she said, you know, if your vitals weren't so good, um, I'd be sending you for a blood transfusion right now. And I said, Oh my gosh, you're kidding. She said, no. So she ran some more tests and she, she called me and she said, we're out of, we're out of my scope now. Now you need to go see a hematologist. I said, okay. So that's when I went, um, and I met my I call my dear friend now because we I see him all the time now, and that's Dr. Chunduri. He's my oncologist, and I I really thank him for keeping me crossing finish lines. Um, my first um, I call it Plan A was I had to do like chemo shots and everything in order to get ready for the stem cell transplant, and then I was downtown Chicago in June of 16. I went down June 1st of 16. And I was there for two weeks, um, had the stem stem cell transplant. I've never been so sick in my life, I I can honestly say and you're kind of on an in an isolated ward, um, because of germs and whatnot. Um, And I got home and I could you know, like walking from the couch to the bed was just exhausting. And it took, took a couple months before I could really start walking again. Um, 
And I slowly got back to it and everything. And um, it took a while before I could run again and definitely not long distance, but through the year, you know, and I had to stay on a chemo pill um, as maintenance. Um, and then in, yeah, in 18, the pill stopped working and the, the multiple myeloma came back. It came back out of remission. So I had to go on to a different plan where now I go and I sit um, in, a, in a chair now every 28 days. And I sit for about four hours and I get a chemo drip. Um, the initial part of that was I had to do it 10 weeks in a row. Um, every Friday, I went for 10 weeks in a row. And then after that, it was the next 16 weeks, I went every other week. And I remember asking my doctor, I said, well, how, so how, after I do that every other week, how many, how many 28 day weeks are we going to be doing here? You know, is it like four of them or, you know, he said, no, as long as you're walking the planet, basically. So I have to do that. And take, um, I take a chemo pill, 21 days on seven days off. Um, and it's keeping me in remission, which is good. Um, it, it makes me a little bit tired. But um, I'm happy to say that last Tuesday, my dear friend Pam and I, just did a 50 miler. It was a run walk, but I did complete 50 miles. So um, I, I just try, I, I'm just very thankful that I am able to continue to do this while still having treatments and stuff. And I honestly believe that, um, you know, being diagnosed with being as healthy as I was is really, um, part of that. So that's why I think it's so important for people to embrace exercise, um, fitness, you don't have to be a bodybuilder or an Olympic athlete or anything like that. But just some form of fitness where you're not just sitting on a couch, because I think if I would have still been sitting on a couch smoking cigarettes, I we wouldn't be having this conversation today. So you do something called gasp running explain to everybody what that is and what that's like oh when i was gasping for running yeah i um that's like normally you know you just run and i can usually run and talk but i knew that there was a, a problem when i was like literally the my air wasn't going into my lungs, which was horrible. Yeah. Um, and th that was just very, very scary. Very scary to me. Very scary. Okay. I didn't realize I, I thought it was a, a type of running. I didn't realize oh, no. that's what you meant by it. Yeah. Well, well tell us about you made a career change from whatever you were doing to personal fitness trainer. What yes. were you doing before you became a per personal trainer? And what was it like to make the change? I, um, I worked at our local book company and I was, um, I was customer service. I trained customer service people, not training like personal training, but like um, training them how to the phones and how to take returns back and all that good stuff. So I went from a, a very um, sedentary office job to um, kind of like the polar opposite, you know, where before I was like on the computer all day, talking to people on the phone, talking to the uh, all the customer service people. So it was um, really, really different because I was like nine to five. And as a trainer, I mean, um, I would start at 5 a.m. and work till maybe like 10 or 11 and then have a break during the day and then go back around three and work till seven. So completely different. Well, tell us about your marathons and ultra marathons that you ran. You ran a lot of them in the past 15 years. Are there any of them famous or marathons? Oh, I've run, I've run Chicago twice. 
Um, let me um, let me grab my book here real quick because I can never remember. I mean, that sounds so silly, but I guess in the world that we live in, depending on what's, um, I've run Chicago twice. I've run Atlanta. Um, the Marine Corps Marathon was probably like my favorite marathon. Um, but let's see, between the years of 2005 and 2014, I crossed the finish line 34 times running 26.2 miles or longer. I've run 16 marathons and 18 ultras. Again, an ultra being anything longer than 26.2 miles. And actually, since then, I, because I, when I wrote this, that was, so I, I've done two, three, four, four or five more since then. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. And yeah, it. It, it it sounds amazing, I guess. But I think when I like when I like I have some other runner friends and they they run like hundred miles and they've done so many and I think oh that's really not so. But I guess to other people it is. You know, it's kind of fun. But it's just something I enjoy, um, and I think that's the whole key to fitness and everything is doing something that you enjoy. Well, tell us about, you kind of talked about your book, Running with Walt, but you also have another book that you're working on. So just kind of give a brief description of both books and tell the listeners where they can pick up your books. Okay. Running with Walt is how a chain smoking couch potato got off the couch. And that was the first book. And that was really pre-cancer. And then the second book I'm working on is called Running for Chanduri. And he is my oncologist. And um, in 16, 2016, after I had my stem cell transplant in June, that October, um, I think six of my friends and I, we walked a 50K. It was the 10th year I was going to do that race because I'd always run it before. Um, and I thought, I really want to do that race. And um, I actually managed to pull it off. We walked a 50K, which is 31 miles. And when I came across the finish line, the people at the finish line they said, okay, we know we're supposed to really cheer when you're done, but we're really not sure why. And um, my hair was like, you know, just teeny like peach fuzz, but gray peach fuzz, you know, chemo hair coming out, slowly coming out after being bald. And I said, oh, I had a stem cell transplant, you know, back in June. And this is, you know, this is like my comeback. And they were like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. I said, yeah, it's thanks to my oncologist. And I, I said, hey, do you, think, do you think I could get an extra medal for him? And they were like, no, but they're handing me a medal. So I brought him that medal. And I said, um, you know, without you here, without you, I would not be here crossing finish lines. So I made like a vow to, um, to bring him a minimum of one medal a year. So that's what I do. That's what I'm doing is keeping that promise to him to, um, and he's keeping me healthy. So he's, he's racking up some medals there. So yes, that's why I'm calling it running for Chunduri because I'm running to keep giving him medals because he keeps me crossing finish lines. Absolutely. And it sounds like your dog is uh, proud of him. No, I'm so sorry. I'm like, oh, no, no problem. Tell us about any current or upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about. Um, Just the book, really, and doing podcasts with awesome people like yourself. Um, and that's, um, gosh, I can't think of anything else really. Just like, I don't know. I'm just trying to be out there and encouraging people. I'm kind of excited. I have a new 5K group starting tomorrow um, at one of our local stores down here, the local running store that I work at. Um, 
yeah. So just all that kind of stuff. I try to blog here and there, but I haven't really had too much of a chance. Um, I think everybody's been so crazy busy this summer, um, you know, trying to get back into the groove with COVID. And I have a, a good amount of clients that are like, oh, gosh, I've got the COVID-19. Help me, help me, you know. So, yeah, that kind of stuff. Well, throw out your contact information, any websites, social media links, so people can stay connected with you. Okay. It's um, it's my name, Sean Tegmeyer dot com s-h-a-w-n-t-e-g-t-m-e-i-e-r dot com um they can also email me at the same name sean tagmeyer at gmail.com um and then i'm on facebook too same name Uh, all right well Give us some final thoughts. Give give people some tips on staying healthy and, and any final thoughts that you might have to close it out. Um, all, all I can say is it, it's never too late. Um, people always think, well, I should have done this, you know, 10 years ago. No, it, it's never too late. You, you know, just get out there and move. You don't have to be in competition with anyone. I always say all movement is good movement. And the most important thing is to find something that you really enjoy, Um, whether it's walking or running or doing like yoga or dancing or biking or canoeing or, you know, there's just no end. There's just no end to um, to what you can do besides sitting on a couch smoking cigarettes. True testament right here. Ladies and gentlemen, SeanTadmire.com. I'll have the website in the show notes. Please be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible. This episode could really encourage someone and help save their lives. Also, Android listeners, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living a Dream with Curveball podcast app. Sean, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh my gosh, Kerbal, thank you so much for inviting me. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.